Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battle Right Sage. So, let's have a talk about the new champion now that we've all had a chance to play him. My initial reaction was a lot like everyone else. Holy crap, this support does a lot of damage. Not only that, but he also has so many escapes. Like, I hardly even found myself needing to use rabbit form because I already had enough mobility. However, as I initially expected, his healing output is a little bit on the low side. So I think most people's first thought was, this support seems super OP, look at all that damage. But in reality, he just does a lot of damage for a support. He can't win straight up trades with a real damage dealer. And while he gets some crazy mobility, he's actually losing out on other utility. So at least to me, he feels a lot like a ranged Sirius. He's got the massive burst, a powerful AoE CC, and oh yeah, he heals a bit too. The only thing that feels like it could be a little bit too much is when you hit those double right clicks in his ultimate. Especially if you take the teleport reset, he can output some insane burst. Like, really insane. But then again, that is his ultimate ability, and the right click is one of the most telegraphed abilities in the game. So, it is easy enough to dodge, but we'll have to wait and see if there's enough counterplay. So, how is he balance wise? Honestly, it's still too early to say. If he had the healing output of Paloma, then he'd be straight up OP, but he doesn't. In 2v2, I guess he can feel a little bit obnoxious at times. I think he might actually be one of the first champions that can actually get away from Shifu without needing peels from his team. But in 3v3, he feels kind of, eh, okay. He definitely feels like a support that you can't just sit in the back healing. You literally won't get enough value out of him like that. And by contrast, as Paloma, you can sit at the back just like a healing turret, occasionally throwing out a long range wolf. That playstyle for Paloma can work. It might not be the optimal way to play her, but you can do it. As Xander, you'll be outputting very little damage if you play like that, and you just don't have the healing burst to justify playing like a healing turret. Plus, you have all that dank mobility, so you may as well just get in the thick of things and you can safely disengage without having to waste skills that you should be using on your team. I thought his spotlight ability, which is his shift right click, would be a little bit better than it is, but the healing comes out really slowly. So it's not bad if you can reset and heal up, but in the middle of a fight, I just feel like the standard right click feels like a much better use of the cooldown. Plus his ultimate burst is insane, so unlike some supports, it can actually be useful to save up for the ultimate. One thing to remember with Spotlight though, is that it actually removes negative effects on your allies, so I feel like it's good as a cleanse more than anything else. One thing that's really interesting about his kit, and you don't actually see the impact of it on the scoreboard, is his heart buff and arcane catalyst debuff. In my opinion, at least in 3v3, Heart Restoration and Arcane Conductors are must picks. His hearts already reduces damage by 15%, and then to add a heal over time is pretty strong. It also allows him to focus a little bit more on damage while the heals keep on rolling. And then you have Arcane Catalyst. With the Battle Right, this gives you another 20% damage on a target. And with the burst windows in Battle Right being so small, that extra 20% team damage is almost the best part of his kit. And then of course you have his portal. This is probably the best part of his kit from a support perspective. It functions a lot like Paloma's other side in some ways, only it's a true iframe, so you can't be pulled out of it with a clarity potion like with other side. You can also send multiple people through it, but there is a short cooldown, so you can't just send your whole team through all at once. I actually like the ability so much that I take the shield and the fading haste battle rights to go with it. And in 3v3, this is an ability you really want to save for bailing out your team. And it's pretty easy to save it for the team because you still have your space and rabbit form to keep yourself alive. Overall, he has a really interesting playstyle and I actually like him a lot. So I'm going to be investing a lot of time into learning him and there's a good chance he'll be in my top three most played alongside Paloma and Lucy. I do play support and healers a lot in games, but if I'm not playing support, I'll usually play something with high mobility. Like in Guild Wars 2, I played Thief, and in Overwatch, I play a lot of Farah. So to have a healer who also has strong mobility is like a dream come true to me. Is he strong enough to be a staple in the pro scene? Only time will tell. My initial instinct as a non-pro is that he doesn't bring as much to the table as Paloma or Lucy, but who knows? Maybe we'll see a setup and burst meta next. Imagine Xander, Alicia, and Croak together. You do stun into sheep into freeze. It's not an easy thing to pull off, but maybe you could eh, stun lock someone to death. I'll see myself out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more Battle Right guides, news, and discussion. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>